Hey everyone, James here. Um, today I'm going to show you a Illustrator script that I use when I'm doing mock-ups uh, to send to a client. Um, basically, I design my stuff at 100% dimensions that it needs to be. For example, this logo here, um, you can see on the right side, it says seven and a half by five and a quarter. Um, and so first I'm going to show you what it does, and then I'll show you where to get it and install it. And then um, I wanted to make some, like customize a little bit, so I made some changes. So I guess uh, the first thing is to select the item. And you go File, Scripts, and here's the, I have two installed, Measurement OG, which is the original and how it came when you download it. Measurement edited is what the changes I made. Um, and the reason that's in there now is because after you add the script, in order to get it to show up in the defaults, you have to restart Illustrator. And I just want to skip that part. So anyway, this is how it shows up. It's called measurement. Again, there's um, there's free versions and paid versions of you know really robust ones. This is a free one you can download. Um, and it does, it's very simple. But it, you can choose the the units that you want to display: pixels, picos, centimeters, etc. Inches is default. Um, the DPI is only needed if you do pixels, um, and then you can choose your color lines: magenta, cyan, red, white, and black. I will show you. I'll just leave magenta, I guess. Um, you can choose a color mode. Usually when you're sending off a piece, it doesn't really matter to a client. The default offset is how far the marks are from the artwork. Five is the default currently. I always changed it to 20, so I ended up changing that. And I added an additional distance of 45 or something like that, or maybe it was 40. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to continue. And then I'll select the 28 and do the same thing. Uh, oops, edit, file, scripts, continue. Okay, so now we can select the whole thing. And you can see how the size of the font that it is and, and all that stuff. When you shrink it down now to fit onto your page, um, sometimes it's a good idea to make a copy so you don't actually reduce the item. Matter of fact, I'm just going to back up and do that. So you take, you select everything, hold Alt so your cursor turns into the double arrow, click drag. There you go. Now we will reduce that down. Okay. Then you'll notice that the being that everything resized, the font size is super small. It's like four point or something like that, uh, four point eight nine. So I'm just going to use my direct selection tool. Select the first one, click Shift, and select all the fonts, and I'm just going to make that bigger. Okay, these are fully editable, so you can make it say width equals seven and a half inches. You can you know, do whatever you want. You can type in there um, whatever you need. Then I'm going to select all of the bars, measurement marks, and then I'm going to deselect the text. I think. There we go. There you go. Um, and then I'm going to make these thicker. Okay, so I made all those thicker. But the only problem is you can see that it made these vertical end marks aren't big enough. They weren't long enough. So when you made the stroke thicker, it kind of threw everything off. So I'm going to back off just a little... Um, that might be a little better. There you go. That's that's it in its simplest form. That's how it works. That's what I do. Um, you'll basically this distance from the artwork to here is twenty. Actually, you know what? I didn't change this one. Let me take that back. So this is twenty. 
but this one I accidentally left at five. So that's how that works. Let me show you, let me get rid of this one. And get rid of all these. Okay, so now I'll put the link in the description. Um, get rid of that. But here is the GitHub file for this script. Okay, so when you land here, this is basically the whole script, right? You're going to come at the very top on the right side, it says raw. Click on that, it'll open up in a, just a basic text file. Do control A, control copy, and then open up a text editor. I am using uh, Visual Studio code. You can use Sublime, um, what, what's it called? <laughs> yeah, Sublime, you can use Notepad++, plus plus. you can use whatever editor you use. We're gonna make a new document and paste that in there. And you'll notice everything is not um, color coded. So we're going to go to File, Save As, and then mine should be on the desktop currently. We'll do all files. This one that says edited. But the big key here is you want to make it say like measurement.jsx. Okay. That should make it so that the editor knows it's a JavaScript file and you can now see everything coded as it as it needs to be. All right. So here we go. The first line we need to edit is on line 300, I think. So we'll scroll down. Uh, you can see around 250. These are all the all the drop down boxes. Um, right here, unit of measure. Um, here we got uh, unit type, inches, points, millimeters. Um, but the one we need is right around three, 301. All right. So we want to make, we want to add yellow. Okay. So we're going to do a quote yellow. Now navigate over and add a comma. So it's quote yellow end quote comma. Okay. Then the right here where it says selection, this is what is selected by default. In computers, don't know if some of you know, but zero is a number. So this is position zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So if I wanted magenta to be the default, I would make this say one. Okay, but I'm gonna I want it yellow to be the default, so I'm gonna leave it at zero. Um, and I'll show you. We're actually gonna change this again. Um, if you scroll down to marker offset value, we got 0, 5, 10, and 20. I'm going to add a 40 just because. And then we got 0, 1, 2, 3. So the 20 is in the 3 spot. We're going to change that to 3. All right. Then we need to physically add. Um, actually, I think what comes up first is the... Um, line markers, the X, Y. All right, so here are the X, which is side to side axis, X axis. And then Y is the down vertical line and endpoints. Okay, so 30, anywhere you see a 30, leave that alone. But on the, on the end, where you see fours, you want to change that to a 10. That is going to basically tell it how long the uh, how long the, the line is. So that's for X, and then we're going to do the same thing for Y. And if you made that something drastic like 50, you would really, I mean, you'll notice it anyway, but um, so we'll make those 10. All right, create the text for X measurement. I'm really looking into, but have yet to figure it out, a way to set the default um, font size. Uh, it's kind of frustrating because I haven't. 
Um, but I may, you know, get in some groups and forums and see if I can figure that out. But now we're going to scroll down. And right here it says get CMY color by name on line 660. On line 667 it says case magenta. There's a color value set for that. Break. We're going to copy from break all the way up. We're going to copy that. And then we're going to line down and then go to the top and paste a second one in there. We're going to highlight magenta and then type yellow. Um, we're going to change the magenta to zero and change the yellow to 100. All right, now that is for the CMYK version. Now we need to scroll down and do the same thing for the RGB. We're going to highlight this whole case. Oops, what is happening? All right, that's fine. Yellow. All right, the red value should be 255. The green value, I wanted it to be a, have a slight little darker tint. It was 242, and then the blue was zero. Those are our color definitions, and that ends the script. So we're done editing. So now we're going to go File, Save. Okay, now here is where um, I'll show you how to install the script. Normally when you do that, you go to Scripts and you go to Other Script. You can navigate to it, and it, basically it lets you use it once. Um, I've never cared for that. So I put it in the script folder so that every time I open Illustrator, it's actually in this script dropdown by default. That's how these show up. So open a folder and then go to your C drive, go to program files, go to Adobe, and then choose your Illustrator version and then go into Presets, English, and then Scripts. Now here is where you would drag the, if you right-click and drag into this folder, when you release it, hit Copy here. So now you'll have a copy on your desktop as well as the folder. But at this point, you would have to restart Illustrator to get that to show up. So let's assume that I drop this in here and I've restarted Illustrator. Now when I select the file, or I'm sorry, the uh, logo, and I go to scripts and go to edited, now you see it has yellow default with 20 and 50 is an option. I think that's much more visible. The font size is still too small, so I do make that change. But that's how I work that. Um, I hope this was helpful and useful to people. Um, so go ahead and give it a thumbs up, like the video, all that kind of cool stuff, and subscribe if you want. And I'm hopefully going to be uploading more. Um, I think in the future I will be doing uh, maybe you may have noticed in the scripts folder I have delete fluff which is kind of cool, um, join text, which is very useful for when a client sends you uh, an old version of Illustrator file and it like breaks it all apart, you can, you can quickly put that back together. Um, you can actually divide text frames, join text frames, um, render swatch legend, that's very cool too. Um, so yeah, stay tuned, click like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you, everyone.